Funding for Far Eyes Furniture is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. If you want to find out how you can support the show, click the link in the description. Okay, here's the problem. The PlayStation 5 is great, and I'm sure it's going to bring my family and me years of enjoyment, but that said, it's kind of an eyesore. Couple that with the fact that in our setup, there's not really any way to hide it behind cabinet doors, since this is all storage and our components just sit on top of the media console. And that leaves us in a situation where it's basically front and center. Now, let me be fair. I don't think that the console's that bad looking in and of itself. One of my podcast co-hosts, Ben Ueda, described it as looking good if it were a skyscraper in Dubai. So really, it's all about context. Sitting on its side in my family room, it just really stands out and not in the way that I'd like. And unfortunately, I can't stand it up because I have a two-year-old who would make pretty short work of it. That's seven. Hey, Otto. What? Are you going to touch my PlayStation? I'm not touching. Are you lying to me? Yeah. I'll touch it. Okay, here's the idea. Since I can't really get the PS5 hidden away anywhere in the cabinet, instead I'm going to lean into having a huge object sitting next to my TV and make essentially a giant PlayStation 1 shell to cover it. So with that idea in hand, all that was left to do is figure out how to actually do that. Alright, here's what we came up with. So the actual design was pretty straightforward, and the only things that we really had to pay attention to were leaving the back and bottom open for easy access and venting purposes. Other than that, we were basically just trying to mimic the looks. That said, we didn't get super detailed because it's just beyond my capabilities at this point. So for example, the louvers on the side just became simple recesses. That said, I think it's still fine, and it still definitely evokes the feeling of a PlayStation 1. The other big obstacle were the proportions. Long story short, the space that a PS5 takes up is much closer to a cube than a PS1, which is much flatter and wider in relative terms. So if you were to just scale up the PlayStation to fit over the PS5, you'd end up with the massive cover. So big that it wouldn't even fit on top of my TV console. It'd be more like the size of a coffee table, which would actually be a pretty cool project, but that's another story for another day. So instead what we did was make the PlayStation a more appropriate size, and then we're just going to have to make a simple platform that it can sit on so that it's tall enough to fit over the PS5. Okay, let's actually start making this thing. Okay, we're going to make a little test card. We just got a piece of plywood in here. Not the real thing, because we don't know what we're doing, and we have no idea if this is going to work. A eh, Sean? What? We don't know if this is going to work. Correct. Actually, I have, I have it on pretty good authority. It won't work. Now, it turns out that our test cut didn't turn out half bad. We were just using some scrap plywood so you can ignore the fraying, but it basically came out as we expected, and it let us figure out what changes we'd need to make to start cutting out the real pieces. After lunch. And I don't know if it's just the Soylent or the pistachios talking, but I feel like we came up with a pretty good game plan. And that was that Sean would prep all the files while I was prepping all the wood. Alright, so here we go. All the files are ready, all the wood is ready, and we can finally start making our first real piece. So everything was modeled in SketchUp, and then we popped it into Easel, which is the software that the X-Carve runs off of. And within the world of digital fabrication, I'd say that these two are on the user-friendly side when it comes to software. So with confidence high, we let it rip. And we immediately messed up. So it's kind of hard to see in this shot, but basically we started our cut too far away from the front edge, so we were just carving air along the back edge. User error. But no reason to fret because thankfully every plank of wood has two sides. Well, technically six, but two faces. So we flipped it over, made sure that we started the cut at the right spot, and then we could carve again. And thankfully this time we got it right. But we didn't want to start celebrating too soon because there's still a ton of work to do. And that started with changing out the quarter inch bit for a chamfer bit so that we could cut this little detail in on the button area. And then changing out the chamfer bit for an eighth inch bit so that we could cut in these little groove details. 
And after doing that, we finally had the first piece of the puzzle completed. And granted, it's the largest piece, but there are still seven others that we have to make, which are all pretty similar from a workflow point of view. And then there's gonna be a fair amount of assembly and handwork that we still have to do as well. So while we speed our way through X carving, let's take a break to thank this video's sponsor, Warby Parker. Now, if you wear glasses like me, or even sunglasses or contact lenses, you're gonna to wanna to hear this. And even though they're a sponsor of mine, I've actually been wearing Warby Parker glasses and recommending them to friends since way before I ever started making YouTube videos. But before I tell you why, here's how it works. You go online, take a quick quiz, and they'll suggest a bunch of frames. Then you pick your five favorites, and they'll send them to you at home to try on, and it ships for free there and back, and there's no obligation to buy. So there's literally nothing to lose. So this time around, I opted for pairs in a variety of shapes. As you can see, these three are basically round, square, and somewhere in between. And I really liked the way that the round pair looked, so I went with the Morgans in Baltic Blue. Anyway, after you've made your decision, glasses start at just $95, including the prescription lenses. And it's really this mix of convenience, quality, and value that got me to try Warby Parker in the first place, and why I've ultimately stuck with them throughout the years for many more pairs of glasses. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. So if you're in the market for any, I highly recommend checking them out. Just visit warbyparker.com slash four eyes to try Warby Parker's free home try on program. Order five pairs of glasses, try them on at home for five days. There's no obligation to buy, ships for free, and includes prepaid return shipping label. So again, nothing to lose. Okay, thanks Warby Parker. Now let's get back to the PlayStation. You ready? For what? We got our pieces cut out. After many starts and stops, messing things up, trying to get them right. We got some pieces. Great. Dang it. Just so that we can roughly see what it looks like, because I'm kind of excited. Obviously, these are going to fit together very poorly still right now, but. just leave it like that. <laughs> I think she's done. <laughs> Alright, so to make the pieces fit together nicely, we had to remove all the extra material that we had left on the perimeter of the pieces, which we could do at our router table using a flush trim bit. That said, there were a few spots where there wasn't enough of a reference surface to do that, for example on the top panel where the PlayStation's recessed in the middle. So to get a clean result there, we cut a little strip of hardwood and clamped the top and front together and then used the front panel as a reference surface. That way the depth of the recess would perfectly match across both pieces. And then since the router leaves round inside corners, we squared it off with a chisel. And then finally at this point, we could glue up the top, front, and two side panels. And then we had to wait for them to dry. Two hours later. You're actually going to use that? Yeah, it's funny. It's like everyone uses it. I've seen it a million times. Yeah, because times. it's funny. I mean, it's not that funny. Everyone uses it. You know, you always say this about my ideas. You don't think they're good. Yeah, I don't think your ideas are good. 20 minutes later. You're just going to ignore me? It's probably because you think I'm stupid. 1 minute 37 seconds later. Hmm. Cheese puff? Soon after. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh. So while those are drying, I can get to work on this little platform that the PlayStation's gonna need to sit on in order to make it tall enough to cover the PS5. And the whole idea here was to do something that contrasts in color, but doesn't really draw that much attention. So we went for that sort of 2017 top regional salesman trophy vibe.
By this time, the shell was dry enough that we could pull it out of clamps and get back to work on it. So that started by sanding it to clean things up. And at this point, it was looking okay, but definitely not right. And that's because everything was still just too square, maybe more like a VCR from the 80s rather than a PlayStation from the 90s, which is certainly inorganic by today's console standards, or maybe not. But in any case, if you look at the PS1, there really aren't any sharp edges. Everything's rounded over probably due to the manufacturing process, but whatever the case may be, intentional or a byproduct, we needed to bring that into our piece to really capture the right look. So after cutting in this little line that runs along the perimeter of the PlayStation towards the bottom, we put a roundover bit in our router and started softening all of the edges. And then finally, with all of the individual pieces looking good, we could put the whole thing together. All right, so I started off this video by posing a problem, which was having a big unsightly object sitting next to my TV. And what I've ended up with is an inarguably bigger, and arguably, I suppose, more unsightly object sitting next to my TV, which isn't exactly a solution. But for me, this works. And I guess it all comes down to what you like looking at. At the end of the day, I don't want a clean, sterile looking media console. And the goal isn't minimalism or minimizing. I mean, not having a Hamburglar cookie jar on the counter would certainly take up less space than having a Hamburglar cookie jar. And it serves no purpose. There aren't even cookies in it, let alone hamburgers. And to that same end, I don't mind a bigger object covering a smaller object, so long as the bigger object is something that I like looking at. But that's me and my opinion and taste is subjective. I don't really know what else to say, so robble robble. Huge thank you to all of my Patreon members for helping to make these videos possible. This video was clearly a fun passion project, and being able to take a week of my time to do something this useless would be impossible without your support. So thank you for enabling me to do that. Truly, I can't say it enough, so again, thank you. And if you want to find out more about how you can support the show and grab a t-shirt and some other goodies, click on the link in the description. And as always, no pressure. All right, I'll see you in the next one.